It's crap from eBay day, and everybody loves a good crap from eBay day, so I'm sure to bring you along for the ride. The crap in question today is... Oh Lord. All right, today's crap is this little Bluetooth module. Um, it's a Bluetooth audio module. I know nothing about it because very little information was provided except for what voltage it ran on. Chip. A little chip out of the side of the board there. Whoops. Uh, hopefully it's still alive. There's no anti-static anything. That's probably fine. So I'm gonna try and keep this quick uh, what I want to test today, this is going into a, a future larger project, um, and I need to test that the output of this <coughs> is going to be sufficient to drive it. I need uh, one volt peak output into an op amp, so, you know, relatively high impedance. We can probably just test this open circuit and it'll be fine. Um, but, just for kicks, I'm going to test, you know, official, missed my air quotes, semi official. Um, line level to see if it meets that as well. Uh, looking up this chip didn't do me any good, although this is a completely different number from on the eBay listing. Anyway, I'm going to do some searching and some setup and I'll be back. All right, setup is set up. I've got a power supply that is set to five volts. I've got some little test leads on here that I can clip onto for, for testing. And because the line out specification for professional use calls for a 600 ohm load impedance, I've got a 593 ohm load. That, that's fine. Oh, and because I remembered after the fact that this is a Bluetooth module, I've got a nice, nice stand here for my, my phone function generator. Just to give us some idea of what we're looking for here, uh, when we're doing the, the line level test into the 600 ohm load, this is what we're expecting. The, uh, the reference level, 0 to B level for Pro, is right here, VPeak 1.095, works out to VRMS of about 0.7. I'm personally looking for one volt peak would be perfect for my project. There is no pairing button. There's a, a not connected um, tab and there's a mute tab. But there's a blinking light on it, so I'm going to assume it's in pairing mode. Oh dear. JDY62. That was the name on the listing. Sure. Oh wow, contacts and call history. It's active. So we're good there. Moved you over to where the action is. I'm going to go for a 500 hertz square wave because that is what the manual for this whole thing suggests for testing audio, specifically audio amplifiers, but I figure it's probably good for audio circuits in general. And it's on, oh, we're on ground coupling, that would make sense. We got something. That's cool. I'm gonna turn it up. I turned this way down as a two volts, or way up rather, to two volts per division, just because I wasn't sure what kind of signal would come out of this. That is horrible. Oh, oh dear. Okay. Ugh. 
gross. That's that's triggered too. That's... that's terrible. To be fair, this is a very tiny, teeny tiny signal and was suggested that the power supply for this needs an LC filter on it. Um, yeah, I think that's what they said. Not really sure why I would need that coming straight out of a lab bench. Power supply should be fine. Uh, let's uh, ramp it up and see if this looks better. No, it still looks terrible. But, am I going to hit that one volt peak that I need? I don't think so. This is at 0.5 volts per division. Yeah, no, not really. Position, there we go. I knew I'd get it eventually. Yeah. So at 0.5 volts per division, we're at one point, be generous, give it 1.4 divisions, 1.4. Yeah, so not exactly the one volt peak I was looking for. That's unfortunate. It does look a little nicer at this signal level, but I think that's, yeah, that's just because it's less, less zoomed in so to speak, yeah, it's, it's not pretty. All right, let's be a little bit more fair to this thing. Um, in the, the finished project, I'm planning to have both the left and the right channels piped, piped into the same input of the op amp through some input capacitors. So I've got that set up uh, here and we'll see if that's any better. Okay, so the good thing is it paired right back up to my phone as soon as I powered it on again. So that's very convenient. Might be difficult to get it back into pairing mode to pair with new devices, but hey, I'll take convenience. And if we turn the square wave back on, it's the same. It's exactly the same. I can't say exactly that I was expecting it to be any different. I might have been hoping for it to be a little different, but it isn't. Yeah, it's, it's terrible, still. Well, uh, there's not really any point in checking to see if this will do line level into a 600 ohm load, because it, it's already it's already failing here. Well, let's do it anyway. All right, I've got what, uh, what channel is this left? I've got the left channel hooked uh, between our, or rather, I've got the 600 ohm load hooked between the left channel and ground. And, oh, oh my. That, that doesn't look right. It doesn't like, uh, doesn't like low impedance loads at all, or, you know. Wouldn't call 600 ohms a low impedance necessarily, but yeah. So that is not gonna meet the line level spec either at all. What about the right channel? Maybe, maybe the right channel. No, no, it's the same. All right. So the output of this is pretty gross. It doesn't really meet my requirements, my ideal requirements for my project. I'm probably going to use it anyway. It's not a critical project. But hey, if you need a Bluetooth module that gets about 600 millivolts, 660 millivolts peak, and has an output that's kind of gross, this might be for you. It's a J, J, D, J, Y, yeah. All right, all right, all right. Just to make absolutely certain I am not being wrong on the internet, I've gone ahead and built up a little, I added the LC circuit, LC filter, 
they call for and I added a linear regulator for one thing because there's going to be one of these in my final project anyway powering this so you know might as well I'm also going to use instead of the power supply I used originally I'm going to use this one which critically is cordless it has a big lead acid battery in it well, not that big, but you know. Um, so yeah, that that should hopefully give this thing the best possible chance of doing what it's supposed to, rather than what it was doing earlier. Let's see if this uh, this filter circuit with the regulator has improved anything. Uh, no, no, it has not. Now the video's over, this is the obvious time to look up what the video was about. It was about the JDY62 Bluetooth 4.0 audio receiver module for stereo dual channel audio speaker. It was $8.71 shipped. I wouldn't specifically recommend against buying one, but I also wouldn't really recommend buying one. Yeah. <laughs>